So in this video I want to show you what tricks scammers use to make you call their numbers and how they try to fool you so that you take their services from them and then that you actually pay them money. So the first basic thing that you need to know is the pop-up. They often place pop-ups on websites, for example if you type YouTube wrong, like for example YouTube with double O U instead of just one single U, then you would get redirected to one of their sites like um, this website here you can see. So what happens is that you get redirected to one of these pages, for example I have a screenshot here. It says Mozilla Firefox Critical Error. You can see in the browser and in the address bar that it's some weird looking URL. Hex 0 Z blah 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 etc. But this is not a legit URL, they have just rented some weird um, domain name so that they can put their error message on there. And then that you get this pop-up, you get this text and this red looking text um, page here. It has a dangerous access, uh, they just try to get an access in their personal login bank information. Usually they use uh, personal login bank information that text because then you get scared about your bank account and all your cash and everything. So that makes you, they try to pressure you so that you call their number. Blah blah blah, and then it says you need to call that uh, toll free number, call help desk, and then there's an, their number on it. You can see like these kind of sites, um, just with a different, slightly different text, and uh, ob obviously a different number running a lot of times. Another um, example is what I had on um, that YouTube video, what um, I already presented to you. It showed the pornographic spyware um, pop up. This is actually not true at all because there is not such a thing as pornographic spyware and riskware, malicious pornographic spyware and riskware. Um, it's just another term that they made up um, in order to pressure you, in order to make you scared that um, something is wrong with your computer and please call us immediately. Do not ignore this critical alert. If you close this page your computer access will be disabled to prevent further all these kind of phrases and sentences they are like made to make you pressured and to make you call instantly so that they can go ahead and take your call and take also your cash. So if you read some yeah text that really tries to make you call instantly and um, you can be aware of that um, that it's a fake pop up and um, that it's definitely not legit. And yeah, you can see you must contact us immediately so that our experts blah blah blah. Um, please call us within the next five minutes to prevent your computer from being disabled. What a bullshit. Such a um, pop up can't disable your computer. It's just, um, yeah, just a fake. Just so that they can, like, pressure you that you can, um, that you need to call to them. So once you get that, you usually should try to close that uh, browser here with X or something here or here. Um, I will show you one of the harder ones that come up on the screen. Um, usually you should not do this, I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes. Uh, ignore the risk and continue the decent site. Okay, that one is down. Trying to find one site that is still up. Oh yeah, this Important one. Important security message. Please call the number provided as soon as possible. You will be guided for the removal of the adware spyware virus on your computer. So as you can see, that one has even some sound. And you can see the physical memory uh, climbs up insanely fast. And this pop-up has some kind of code in it and some plugin, some script. I don't know what exactly. But it eats up your your RAM, your physical memory, pretty fast. It makes your computer uh, lag as hell and not react to anything after some time. You can see it's climbing, it's climbing, it's climbing, it's going up as hell. So after some time it will be at 100% and then you can't move anything on your computer. Everything is pretty slow. You can easily um, you can block this by killing it through the task manager. You can get the task manager by clicking on the taskbar and then start task manager or press ctrl plus alt plus delete so that comes up and this um, I like this website it's pretty it's trying to be pretty legit you see the Microsoft logo in the left top corner 
and it even has uh, the elements of the Microsoft website. I can see a lot of flaws in it, like for example, um, that here there's some icon missing, and here down there as well, here as well, and no Microsoft site has the yeah, sub penetrant fee shown that um, the number on their screen. And also you can see like there's some design issue. Like for example, this, this font doesn't match with the previous one here, this back here. You can see it's a different style. Also that this icon here, it looks like an like from the XP era. Like it, this four colors and everything, but the way that it is designed, it looks like XP. And here it's not co properly bordered that button. It's a it's very poorly designed, but it really tries to make you um, believe that it's a Windows site. Just open that um, task manager and kill the process with the highest CPU uh, consumption here. And you can just simply delete, press delete, or right click, uh, right click, end process, and then end process. And then it will be closed and, <laughs> sorry for the background. The second thing that they usually go for is uh, the event viewer. Once they made you call their number and you're connected to them using some support uh, remote access tool, and usually they go ahead and pull up the event viewer that goes by pressing Windows button and R at the same time that you get this run box, and then they can just put in event VWR, and then you come up to this event viewer. I've already opened it. And here you can see a lot of like um, events. Usually that event viewer is made for so that you can check what is going on in your computer. And it has a lot of warnings and errors. But these errors, like they are not um, any kind of, how to say, most of them they are not really, um, they don't have really have a meaning like for, for us, for the security uh, reasons. They tell, for example, if you, um, uh, if you outplugged your laptop and like switched the power off without shutting the windows properly down with the button, um, you get some critical error or uh, yeah, you get some critical power off kernel power. Yeah, you can see the system has rebooted without cleaning, cleaning, shutting down first. So that means so that you just put out the battery of the laptop and so that you have made a hard reset of that computer. So these kind of things, they are shown here, some errors and warnings, but most of the time they don't mean anything. They just, um, you can see here, name resolution for the time, windows.com, it's a time server for Windows, so that you get automatically the right time on your computer system. Um, some error messages that are like totally not saying anything relevant in, in, um, yeah, for the security of your computer. Another thing they're gonna do is uh, they open the CMD and open it, and it will automatically open this white black box where you can put in like some commands. CMD also means command, and it's some Microsoft tool that you can change settings of your computer instantly without um, moving to the right settings app or something. So it, you can instantly change any setting with the right command line. Very useful for sysadmins because you can write batch files. It's another topic, but very useful tool. And so they're gonna open this and then they type in cd dot dot create field and press enter cd dot dot. So what that makes, it goes back one one level. Like you can see I'm in C drive at users at the folder users and then folder Adrian. And using that command cd dot dot makes you go back one one level to the users folders instead of Adrian. And the same thing once again, so that you are finally in the C drive. And what they do is then they put in a tree and hit enter. And what it does, it shows you the, the visual structure of your computer, like the folders and how they are like, um, yeah, collapsed, how to say, how, they, how your computer's built up with the folders doesn't mean anything. It, it looks like a scan or they try to pretend that um, they're currently scanning your computer, which is pretty hilarious because that doesn't scan at all. It just shows you the structure of your computer in a visual way. So you can see like one folder in one other folder and such a you see the stru structure. What happens is at the end of that tree command, they copy paste 
some text in it, which should look like it's actually the scan has completed and it has found some Trojan virus or whatever they uh, before they pretended to have. So that they can show you like they have found actually something and that they can go ahead and continue with the clean cleanup and yeah, it's just to make it look more legit the whole thing. Another thing that they usually do is uh, they show you stopped services. You can find you can find it using the same run box, and then you can put in MS config, press enter. Then you come to the system configuration thing, and there you can s s um, switch to the service tab, and you can see a lot of services and um, yeah, some of these are stopped. You can see a lot of services have been stopped from the Microsoft Corporation. They make you think that this is actually like some mistake or something, but it it is, yeah. How to say it's automatically like that. I can't tell you the exact reason how they why they are stopped, but that is something completely normal. My computer is pretty new. Like I set up this virtual machine, pretty pretty new, and there's no virus or something at all. And these these services stopped. Maybe they are not needed and that's why Windows doesn't start them or I don't know at least I know that for sure that they are not stopped like because of some virus or because of some failure even I disabled or stopped someone some of these services like this Adobe Flash Play Update service because uh, I don't know, want to get annoyed by this Adobe Flash Play Update so I disabled it from starting up and um, so it is stopped because of that because I've manually disabled that particular one service. So they make you believe that it's something bad, but it isn't at all. Another quite funny thing is the CPU performance. Um, usually they go either here in the task manager, and then they show you that uh, CPU usage. They open also sometimes the performance monitor. <coughs> And um, it usually shows you like the computer's performance. So there's a bunch of different ways they can perform this trick. Either they open the task manager and show you here the CPU usage, and or they can open the performance monitor using um, the perfmon uh, command or name of it. And then they show you this, or they sh can also show you an out of that view. And then they show you, depending on the view, they show you like, they tell you, oh, your your performance is really low. You can see it's just one percent of performance, thirty nine. So it's very low, but it's which is quite hilarious because it's the contrary thing. If the CPU usage would be like at hundred percent, that would be worrying. That would be meaning that there's some kind of problem with your computer, some program is running, consuming all your CPU um, performance, but they try to tell you that a low number is actually bad, which is exactly the, the contrary to what it, what usually is the case. This is quite hilarious. The next thing that they often use is they open the prefetch folder, which goes by open that prefetch, and they open that. And then you got uh, get directed to the C drive, Windows directory, and prefetch folder. What you can see, there's a bunch of different files, and some of these you can't open. And they try to often they try to open that files, and often with Notepad or something, then there will be like some kind of text and some yeah, it shows shows you this corrupted text, and then they make you aware that this is a virus or something and something like that, and then you can see a lot of uh, files corresponding to .exe files, so they tell you that these kind of files are the viruses or the bad files. And you can see these 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 files are pretty small, like just 20 kilobyte, um, 100 kilobyte. So that in total they are nothing. Like the, the size of that is in total 20 megabytes, which it's not much. And then they go ahead and delete it because they tell you that it's a virus. But actually, deleting this is actually slowing down your computer because these files are there to make your computer faster because they contain data related to the most used applications and just some kind of system folder that 
like booting your system faster by allocating some of the informations in that file files. So deleting that it makes your system even slower or sh should te theoretically make it slower. But what I can say for sure is that there's no virus or no malicious files at all in this folder. A very similar thing is the temp folder. You can access that temp folder by going here, temp. And it's a pretty similar thing. Um, actually, this is you can delete it after some time. It's if you, for example, if you run something directly from the internet or stream something, sometimes it gets or download something. Yeah, it gets downloaded to that folder, and usually it gets pretty. Yeah, you can delete files from here, but still. Um, it doesn't mean that your computer is infected with a virus here. I mean, it's often, it's yeah, it can be that there, like, there's some viruses or something because if you get Wi-Fi downloads or something, but still, how to say, the if you have an antivirus or something that it will detect it nevertheless, it doesn't mean that the temp folder is. It doesn't necessarily mean that the temp folder is infected with the virus. Right? And they don't even go ahead and scan that folder. They just go right away and tell you that this folder is malicious and then um, they just go ahead and delete everything which can be also so these are the things that the scammer usually do make you believe that your computer is infected. Don't fall for these things because they don't mean actually anything. They are just there to make you scared and to make you feel like um, they are the computer experts but they actually are, are not. So um, let me know in the comments if I forgot something that scammers usually use to make us believe that you have a virus or if you have come across any personal story um, you can also let me know.